there's what seems to me a very important pro paragraph towards the end of um, yeah. this, um, where you write that physics does not determine metaphysics. Right. But as a layman, I'm astonished how ready some um, quantum physicists are to uh, use the word God. I mean, uh, Einstein was notorious for using the word God. You know. Yes. Well, people who work in, particularly people who work in fundamental physics, and mm. some of you pretty good example of that, um, are deeply impressed with the the order of the world. Not mm. only that it is orderly, but it is also beautifully ordered. Yes. One yes. of the fundamental equations of physics always find to be expressed in what a mathematician would recognize and agree about as being beautiful equations. Mm. So the world is not only transparent to our uh, inquiry, but also gives um, scientists the reward of wonder for their investigation of it. Mm. That produces a sort of cosmic rigidity. This, this can't be just a just completely happy accident. There mm. must be something behind that. And what's behind it will be something like um, a divine mind. Mm. On the other hand, Einstein also was absolutely a uh, fatty, he didn't believe in a personal God. Mm. And so, so uh, a sort of cosmic religion is quite natural, religiosity is quite natural to, to many, many scientists, but it's a pretty thin form of religious belief, <laughs> and it leaves many questions unresolved. The whole personal realm of things, I mean, okay, if there's a divine, divine mind behind the universe, does God care for individual human persons, for example? Mm. That's a question that you can't answer in, in that mm. sort of way. You mentioned that Einstein found quantum mechanics little to his metaphysical taste. Well, that's right. And even I'm... Schrödinger became disillusioned with quantum physics when presented with its probabilistic character. Yes, absolutely. So they had metaphysical prejudices. <laughs> Well, yes, I mean, in the case of Einstein, it's very clear to see what their prejudice was. Most physicists are instinctive realists of some form or other. Mm. Critical realists, no doubt, recognize it. Of course, but, yes. That, 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 that they are really investigating the physical world that's out there. They're not just playing games mm. to show their virtuosity. Mm. Einstein was, of course, deeply convinced of the reality of the physical world, but he had, a, he had the rather naive view that only an unproblematic objectivity would guarantee reality. And I would say that one of the lessons you draw from, from quantum theory is that reality has to be approached on its own terms. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That we don't know beforehand what is rational, but even all we have to see what works. Mm. What, yes. we, the nudge of nature has to push us in some, in some sort of uh, uh, appropriate direction. Yeah. And that, 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 that's why I, I find hated um, quantum theory, I think, despite the fact he'd be the grandfather of it. <laughs> well, of course, I, I find it extraordinary that these very realistic <laughs> um, chaps who are studying a, a realistic yeah. um, or physical reality uh, have these fierce metaphysical emotions. It's a sort of dirty word. It sort of means mm. to me, it's just airy fairy. Nonsense. But everybody has a metaphysic. It simply means a world view. Mm. You have to have a world view. Yes. I mean, somebody who tells you, for example, that there's nothing to reality other than what physics can tell you about it, that's, that person hasn't learned that from his or her science. Mm. It's a metaphysical assumption. Mm. Uh, but the interesting thing is that even metaphor, physical questions you think physics would influence very strongly, like, for example, what is the nature of causality? Is it deterministic? Or is it open and indeterministic in some way? Quantum theory actually, it turns out, is compatible with either of those views. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. you have to, and there's a, there's a sort of Copenhagen interpretation, there's Bohm's ingenious theory. Most of us think that Bohm's ingenious theory is too clever by heart. Yes. And, and it has an air of contrivance about it. Yes. But um, that's a metaphysical judgment, not a physics judgment. Mm. And it, it rather depends, as it's saving grace, on the Planck and the Schrödinger equation, anyway. Isn't it? Well, he has to have an equation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he produced the trick that, that Bohm did was to separate wave and particle, which quantum mm -hmm. theory says are inalienably uh, complementary parts of a single mm -hmm. entity. In Bohm's theory, there are both particles, which are pretty Newtonian in their behavior, and, and there's a wave. The wave, have a wave, you want to have a wave equation. If you want to get the right results, you have to have Schrödinger's wave equation. Mm -hmm. 
And that's, that's, where, the, that's where the ad hoc character of you can motivate the Schrodinger equation very well within the quantum theory, conventional quantum theory picture. But um, mm. it, it, in both theories, it has to be just plucked out of the air.